Hey y'all, there's a saying, the lie makes it around the world before the truth gets out of bed. Social media blending with the news has created this thing where they make stories just to get clicks. So they made it look like my story was, I have harsh words, harsh words, harsh words for Janelle Monet and Meg Thee Stallion, and I do not. If I were addressing Janelle Monet and Meg Thee Stallion, that would have been clear. The concept that anytime a woman says anything, even in the vicinity of another woman, she's being catty and she's fighting. And so now we got this headline about what I supposedly did. Who I was addressing were the people in the comments explaining to them that the video in question, not Meg the Stallion, not Janelle, but the video in question was out of context for the Essence Festival. Essence is a 53-year-old institution that was always about wholesome Black entertainment. The brand shifted right under people's feet. That's what I meant when I said context. What I did was jump into the comment section and in fact, in defense of someone who was in the comment section trying to explain her uh, trust of Essence brand being broken, I commented about the context. That's what I did. We all know everybody twerks. Everybody knows who Meg Thee Stallion is. She's one of the biggest stars in the world. And so is Janelle. Everybody knows what they're about and what they do. We weren't saying that they shouldn't do what they do. We were saying context, which is what my message said. The part that really is important that people should know is that the Essence Festival was purchased. And so the new owners are trying to take it in a different direction, and they are. And the rub is that people weren't told that. So now everybody's buying their tickets to go enjoy their weekend down in New Orleans in July like they've been doing for the last 20, 25 years. And this moment happens on stage. For the last 20 plus years, my whole adult life, I've been nothing but uplifting and deeply caring and deeply loving and speaking highly of us as black people always. I released the song Brown Skin, what, 18 years before Brown Skin Girl? I've been about this. I'm still about this. I love us. I have my opinions about things that may differ from other people, but I don't be out here arguing with people. I speak my mind, I share my ideas, but I've always done that. And I'm always going to. So, okay. I'm sure many of you know who this woman is, but if you don't, I'm going to give you a little context. So, um, India Ari is a, I would say like a neo soul semi R and B singer, right? Um, she plays a guitar. She's been around for over 20 years as she stated. Um, and a lot of her, the content of her music is, it is very, um, you know, love yourself, self love, black love, um, you know, uh, loving your imperfections, you know, so it, it is very much in support of what a lot of women want to hear. Right. So especially in this day and age, the, the, the songs that she came out with, as she said, like 18 years ago, were, would be the soundtrack to a lot of women's lives in, in the era of shaming. Right. Everything is body shaming and this shaming and that shaming. And, you know, her, the content of her music has always been like, you know, love yourself. Nobody can tell you not to, you know, you're beautiful. Don't try to fit into anybody else's image. You were made and created, you know, in your own likeness and appreciate that. It's, it's all, it's all well and fine. Um, when women are being told these things, right? However, I think that India Ari, as well as a lot of other artists or a lot of other people out there who were witnessing this entire situation unfold, they have learned that we are in an era that as soon as you say something against the sisterhood and everything that they stand for, no matter how supportive you've been, no matter how much you love them, no matter how much uh, you genuinely care about the community, you are going to be kicked out. <laughs> okay? It don't matter if you, done, if you gave 20 years 
to to the sisterhood it don't matter if you were standing 10 toes down at the forefront to defend you know or to break barriers for the women who were coming behind you if you say something about the things that they are doing right now they're gonna call you a hater they're gonna call you pick me mammy they're gonna call you all the above because you are going against the grain of whatever it is that they are trying to push forth Can you imagine um, a space that we're in where a woman who supports other women and who has been supporting them for a very long time stands forward and says, you know, there's a time and place for everything. And they are canceling her, bashing her. They call her, you know, oh, you old news, you this, you that. They're, they're calling her derogatory names. Oh, you know, this is this is exactly how old women act. When young women get around, you know, they're just defaming her. The, the shame that they're supposed to have, that they don't have, they're giving it all to her. They're shaming her for standing up for class, for standing up for respect, for standing up for decorum. Can you imagine? The whole the whole situation was is that um, Essence Festival, as she was saying, it goes on. It's been going on for a long time. I, for many of you who do know about the Essence Fest, it is a place where a lot of um, you know black artists, creatives, they all get together. They enjoy this entire festival. There's music there. You know there are um, actors and actresses that attend. You know it's a whole celebration of the culture. It's very classy. It, as she, as she noted, it's it's something that you know people can get together as a, as a um, uh, a festival and they can fellowship with one another. They have panels. They talk about hair care. Like there's it's a whole thing. At this said festival, there were artists there, and we saw the video of the women who were bent over, turned over on stage, where there's families, there's children, you know, there's groups of people who are there who are witnessing these people turn around and twerking on stage. Okay. Acts like India Ari, and I don't, I'm not sure if there was anybody else who said something. You know, they were just standing forth, like, hey, like, this is kind of like against the grain it's, it's a family structure this is a family setting this is a place that even women of like you know older generations can come and feel comfortable there's gospel music playing there you know this is a space that this is like a very uplifted space for our culture this is how we how we best represent ourselves and this is not the time and place for y'all to be bent over twerking in this kind of atmosphere, in this kind of environment. People said she jealous, she a hater, she throwing shade. She needs to just be quiet. She, you know, some people don't need to have, be on the internet talking about other people, like dragging her. For what? Back in the day, you know, it used to be like a diss if somebody would have called you like a 304 or like, you know, a hoochie, you know, you call somebody a hoochie, like you get in some real trouble. You go, oh, I can't believe she called me a hoochie. I'm telling, you know, back in the day, it was like a very like disrespectful disregard. Like you don't want nobody to say that you, you know, was sleeping around. You don't know, want nobody to address you in a certain manner. And nowadays, if somebody says, um, you know, anything when it comes to being classy, oh, you think you better than people. You think you better than people or you shaming me or, you, you know, you you with the patriarchy, you trying to hold us women down. I don't get it. I'll never get it. We live in a time that, you know, wrong is right. And right shouldn't be talked about. If you have anything that goes against um, what these these younger modern women want to represent themselves as, then you are the problem. Because you know it's it's very much a generation of women who are who are coming up that you can't tell me nothing, you can't do nothing, you can't say nothing to me, you can't correct me, you can't hold me accountable, you can't tell me what I'm doing is wrong. 
If you are not sitting here applauding me and clapping for me, even if I'm literally doing something to my own detriment, then I don't want to hear nothing from you. And as a matter of fact, we're going to cancel you. We're not buying her albums. We're not buying this. We're not buying that. Who cares if she was talking about, you know, I am not my hair. I am not my skin. Who cares? Who cares if she's, if she's singing about black, black love? Who cares? You know, and, and I want to say this too. We're in an era where a lot of women, artists, creatives, singers, they, I don't know if they don't necessarily understand the magnitude of the situation of what's going on within relationships right now. But you see, um, people like India Ari and like certain artists, they sing about um, love and, and connection and the genuine feeling between two people, right? It's not just about like, oh, you know, he whack, he lame, he this, he that. It's not just about I'm going to sit on it, I'm going to bounce on it. Like it's about like real love. And they would rather exile this entire conversation, exile the co exile you talking about loving yourself, exile you talking about self love, exile you talking about you talking about you know you're trying to protect yourself or or uh, elevate yourself, just because you said something that they own mama can't even tell them. My mama can't even tell me to do tell me what to do. Who are you? And then we also see a level where a lot of the people, people who we would have deemed classy because they can't beat them, they join them. So now people who would have been considered role models are out there acting just like the people who we speaking out against. Because they're afraid that they're going to lose fans or people going to cancel them because they're not jumping on the train rather than standing on what's right. Again, I, I have to say, I, I think she's come to a place that she's realizing <laughs> that they will kick you out of the sisterhood no matter how long you've been in it, no matter if you invented it. You out. You got to go. Because once you're not in, su into, in support of the now, we don't want to hear it. And if this is how this, this generation of women are thinking now, imagine how they're going to raise their daughters. Imagine. Ain't no Clay Hux Huxtable. It's only Shanene. <laughs> I'm just being real. Okay, I'm just being real. I'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.